girl flipped the truck over with just a look. The boys were amazed at the sight. Dr. Brenner did not seem to panic as Mike and others managed to escape. I watched them ride farther and farther. At that moment, some strangers came to Mike's house. They said they were FBI intelligence agents. But in reality, they were people from Hawkins' lab pretending to be people. They immediately began a full search of Mike's house. A lady tells Mike's mother that Mike is hiding a girl and that the girl is dangerous. But Mike's mother suddenly lost her temper and asks him what he wanted to do. Dr. Brenner immediately comes to reassure her, assuring Mike's mother that he will find him and make sure he is safe. Seeing Mike's mom in a better mood, Dr. Brenner began to talk more formally. He wanted Mike's mother to tell him where he frequented. On the other side, a woman came to the police station with her son to report that some crazy girl had broken his arm. Help initially thought it was just a fight between kids and was going to ask the officers to finish writing them up and send them home. But Troy's description immediately caught Hope's attention. Troy tells Hope that the girl has no hair and has superpowers. After hearing this, Hope went to the boy and asked Troy where the girl was now. Troy replied that she stayed with Mike and others all day. At this time, Hope ready to send Nancy home by the way to find out the whereabouts of the little girl far to see the FBI people at the door. Nancy is worried about her parents' safety and wants to go home, but is stopped by Hope. He told Nancy that her parents didn't know much about the situation and that she was safe. They need to find Mike and others as soon as possible. Hope asked Nancy to think of places where her brother used to go, but Nancy couldn't think of any. Then Jonathan suddenly had an idea. The four immediately drove back to Joyce's house, and after searching, they finally found the walkie-talkie that Jonathan usually used to communicate with Mike under the bed. On the other side, Mike and others are nervously analyzing the situation. The entrance to the other world could be inside the lab, which is a military base guarded by soldiers. Rumor has it that the military is working on ways to deal with the Soviet Union, and Eleven is their weapon. Mike and others at this time with Eleven escape has become a fugitive, certainly cannot go home. While the boys were talking, a helicopter suddenly flew in the distance. Three people hurriedly hid the bike under the bus, and then rushed into the car with Eleven to hide. Soon after, as the helicopter flew away, Nancy's voice suddenly came over the intercom. She told Mike it was urgent and to answer immediately. But Mike is wary, fearing that Nancy has been kidnapped by the wrong people, like Lando Calrissian in Star Wars. Hope is more grumpy, immediately grabbed the walkie-talkie, with Mike and others to start a call. He tells the children that he knows Eleven exists and that they are in danger. As sheriff, he promised to protect everyone, but he needs to know where Mike and others are right now. Mike thought about it for a while, but finally believed the sheriff and told him where they were. But after this, a long time passed, and no one came. Destin was very anxious. He began to speculate that it might be a trap, that the sheriff was in league with the bad guys and was raising troops to catch them. Lucas immediately retorted, and while the two were arguing, there was a sudden noise outside the car. Mike and others came to the window to observe and found several cars coming. A group of men got out of the car, all with guns in their hands, and Mike and others quickly hid behind the seats. A man found a bicycle under the bus and speculated that there might be someone on board. He was about to open the car door when he was suddenly knocked unconscious by a punch from behind. It turns out to be Sheriff Hope, who sees the children here and brings them safely back to Joyce's house. At this point, the three groups finally came together. As they exchange information, Mike explains how the reverse world works and where Will is hiding, possibly inside Hawkins' lab. Sergeant Hope immediately claimed that he had seen the entrance. Joyce wants to use Eleven's power to reach out to Will and talk to him. But just after everything was ready, Eleven's powers failed. The friends think that Eleven's powers are like batteries, and today he used too much energy and may have run out of power. Eleven sat came to the bathroom, want to wash her face to calm down. At that moment, she saw the bathtub behind her and suddenly remembered her experience in the lab. Once out, Eleven tells everyone that if she can create a closed environment similar to the lab, she can find Will. So, Mike and others immediately took action, and Eleven was ready. She lay down in the pool with her blindfold on, the lights flashing, and Eleven entered the mine world, where she first found Barbara, but by this time, Barbara had become a corpse. The horror of the picture scared Eleven scream loudly. Hear the news of Barbara's death. Nancy is very sad. Eleven's reaction is very intense to us next, to constantly pacify Eleven. 
Will, who was pale in the tree room, was humming. Suddenly, he heard something around him. Suddenly, a monster jumped at Will. At this point, Eleven recovers her calm, and she moves onto Will's treehouse and finds Will unconscious inside. Joyce was so excited to know that Will was alive that she asked Eleven to give Will the summons number, telling him that Mom would be here soon and telling him to hold on. A week, Will forced an answer from his lips. Hurry. Hurry. Eleven also wants to continue the message, but at this time, behind the treehouse and Will in front of the Will are turned into a cloud of smoke, instantly disappeared. Eleven once again fell into the darkness, very afraid, and at this time, the reality of the little Eleven, finally free from the mind world. Joyce hugged Eleven tightly and kept saying comforting words to her. Now I know Will is safe. The next thing to do is try to dive into the inverse world and rescue him. The children accompany the collapsed Eleven, who put on a coat and planned to move, but Joyce wants to go. As a mother, she insisted on going to the reverse world to save her son. Joyce, after calming Jonathan, immediately turned away and arrived at Hawkins' lab with Hope. Nancy is very sad about Barbara's death, but she believes that Hope and Mother are going to die in the reverse world. So she decided to take Jonathan with her, follow through on their previous plan to use blood as bait to hunt monsters. The two immediately stole back their hunting gear from the police station. On the other side, Hope is planning to sneak into the lab with Joyce, but the two have not entered the prison. They were caught by the guards in advance.